kind of funny how things come into your mind when you're looking back years and years. So jumping back from track to back to basketball season. And we hadn't had many home games. And uh, during the second half of the game, uh, Skeet Pearsall let me know that before I left the building, he had something he wanted to show me. Well, I, you know, knew that it wasn't going to be a good thing because he was obviously a little upset about it. But after the game was over, I had the PA system put up and people had left. It's all skeet, and he took me to the boys' restroom. And I looked around, it was clean, neat, I didn't see anything wrong. Skeet points to the ceiling. Well, I'll be darned. Muddy footprints on the ceiling of the bathroom. Uh, what the heck? Uh, Skeet says those little devils have come in and gotten on the stool and maybe cleared on the water closet and uh, jumped up and grabbed those uh, top sides of the dividers between the stalls. And they swung their bodies until they could get upside down and put their footprints on the ceiling. Well, we could tell looking they were pretty young kids with very big shoes. So I was, you know, I appreciated the fact that those Keith wasn't having that building disrespected and not treated right. So I said, well, okay, I'll look into it. Well, he said, I've got a pretty good idea who did it. Well, okay. And I can't remember if that was after the first time or if he watched for a second time, but he got it down to where he pretty well knew who we had that was marking the ceiling. So, I, you know, it's during school, I call in those boys one by one, and I get, to, I don't know, two or three of them that said, yeah, yeah, they, they were responsible for some footprints on the ceiling. So, you know, matter's closed, as far as I'm concerned. But... Obviously, those boys went back and said to another one, look, we're, we're fessing up to what we did. You need to fess up. And I think I'd already told those boys, you know, you're going to get your tail end dusted with a few swats. Well, for whatever reason, whether it was the boys, whether it was his conscience, whether he talked to his parents, I don't know. But uh, I think it was the fourth. The extra boy came in and said, you know, I'm, I was involved in that. And I said, well, that, uh, I appreciate you coming in, and you'll get the same treatment that the other boys got. And they did. I paddled all three or four of them, whatever it was. Not hard, but I, you know, hard enough. You don't want to do that. Well, my gosh, the parent was pretty upset. He didn't think... And he, I can't remember if he was a school board member or just that he was a staunch, upright, influential student or a patron in the district. But he wasn't happy at all. He didn't feel like since his boy hadn't been caught and had come in voluntarily and indicated that he was part of it, he didn't feel like that the boy should be punished. Well, I guess, you know, as a parent, you look at things one way. As a principal, superintendent, you look at them another way. I thought the boy did an honorable thing and that he expected to be treated the same as the others, and certainly I treated him the same. I don't know if the father ever forgave me or not. He wasn't very happy about it. I certainly wasn't unhappy with him. I could understand how he felt. But you know how life is. Sometimes you do the crime, you spend the time, in this case you take the swats. We never had any more trouble of that kind, I might add.